Hello everyone, welcome to Aptera Owners Club. Today I wanted to talk about the reasons behind um, low EV adoption and why Aptera is the perfect vehicle to address many of those concerns. So most of you guys watching this channel are all on board with EVs. Probably you already own an EV. And one of the major reasons that we need to convert to um, a predominantly EV transportation infrastructure is that EVs are just more efficient. And that's just plain physics. Internal combustion engines are between 12 and 30% efficient. That means about 70 to 88% of the energy stored in the fuel is completely wasted as heat. Whereas EV motor um, is about 77 so about 80 percent efficient so much more efficient like on the order of 400 percent more efficient but why is it that people are not adopting evs um well some of it is you know they just never have been in one those of us that have driven evs realize that it's just a bet on top of efficiency it's just a better vehicle it's quieter it's smoother it's more responsive uh, it has a lot of torque off the line they're just more fun to drive too. So once people drive EVs, they understand it's just a better car. And so what are the barriers to people buying it? One of it is cost. Um, EVs are generally more expensive than their ICE counterparts and cost remains the biggest barrier against EV adoption um, according to several studies. So what is the average cost of a new car? So recently, this is a very recent article from Forbes and the average new car price topped $45,000. And then if you look at Aptera, a, the price ranges from $26,000 to $45,000. Now, this is uh, the very high end uh, with 1,000 miles, which is unheard of range. Um, but, you know, even the lowest end gives you 250 miles. And then this is the most, will probably be the most popular option. This is the option that I bought. It's $30,000. That is significantly less than the average price of a new car. Now, that being said, this is a, um, a quote, less capable vehicle. It's a two-seater um, and has a few limitations. But it is definitely not expensive compared to a average new car. That's in contradiction to, you know, the more popular electric cars like Teslas, which are significantly more expensive than the average car. All right, so um, on cost... Aptera is a reasonably priced vehicle and easily competes with ICE cars um, on, in terms of price. Next is range anxiety. Range anxiety is a big issue. And this is mostly because the early generation of EVs had like pretty bad range. My first EV was a 2010 Nissan Leaf. That thing had a range of about 70 miles. My second EV was a Fiat 500e. That one didn't have great range, but you know what? It wasn't a big problem for us. We used it mostly as an in-town car. We got it groceries, dropping off the kids at school for soccer practice, that kind of stuff. And um, it worked fine for that. And most people that get an EV, the range anxiety kind of dies down. But you just have to understand it's for a certain use. And we never took those cars when we went on longer trips, like if, you know, if we were going to the mountains or to the beach or something like that. Um, that just didn't happen. Um, but now, once you have cars that have like over 200, 300 mile uh, range, then that's really, range anxiety is not as big an issue anymore. And if you look at the Aptera, the lowest mile has 250 mile range, which is plenty for most people. I mean, compared to the 70 mile range of the first generation EVs, um, it's, it's just eons better. Um, and 250 miles is basically the average range of your average like third gen EV, you know, like the, the um, Hyundai Kona, um, Bolt, those kinds of things. They're, they're roughly around 250 miles and like the non long range Model 3, those kinds of things. And then everything beyond that, this is crazy. You know, like 400 miles is a lot of range. It's, it's on par with the highest range um, available EVs now and then there's no EV currently that has 600 mile range and and 1000 mile range is just ridiculous so range anxiety is not really an issue for Aptera then 
The other thing is lack of charging infrastructure. And, and that's true. There's just not that much charging infrastructure. I mean, with these um, supercharger network, Tesla has like pretty decent charging infrastructure. And charging infrastructure is getting better. Uh, Electrify America is putting out new things and um, ChargePoint. There's, it's definitely getting better, but it's not great. But um, there's two things about the Aptera that make charging infrastructure infrastructure less necessary. Number one, it has solar, so you can charge up to 40 miles a day with solar. And then number two, it's highly efficient. So e even if you don't have access to a DC fast charger, even with level two charging, you will get significant range, um, even through uh, level two charging, uh, probably on the order of um, like 100 miles or 200 miles per hour, uh, which is pretty good. And then the last thing that uh, people don't really talk about too much is EVs are extremely hard to deal with if you're an apartment dweller. So this is the current statistics, about 44 million households are renters and 37% of them are in apartments. So that means about 17 million households, um, really EVs are not, not practical for them. Because most people that have EVs, they live in a house, they just plug it in when they get home, and um, you know they can they have the option to plug it in every night if they want to. Um, they may they probably won't need to with an Aptera, but if they want to, they can. However, with uh, if you live in an apartment, you really can't charge. There's a few newer, um, more expensive apartment complexes that will have chargers in their parking areas but the vast majority of apartments have no charging infrastructure. Um, I have a friend that owns a Tesla Model Y and she had to move into an apartment um, from her house for various reasons. And it was just a nightmare trying to find um, charging for her. You know, she was thinking of like weird ways of how she could like run an extension cord out her window to the car. You know, these were just all not practical. She ends up luckily having some charging infrastructure at her job and she charges there. But if you just don't have charging infrastructure at your job and at your home, you know, having an EV is not practical. However, with an Aptera, let's say that um, you have, you buy the 400 mile range, which would be the most popular one. And you have like the average commute in America, which is like 15 miles or something like that. So you're, you're using like 30 to 40 miles a day. If you live in a relatively sunny area, like charging is not even that important for you. You could go for months without charging with it with an Aptera and you just park it in your apartment complex and it will charge with the sun and you can just find a charger, you know, once a week, once every two weeks, once a month, maybe, um, and just kind of top it off. So Aptera makes it possible for people that live in apartments to own an EV and to enjoy the use of an EV because they're not dependent on having charging infrastructure in their garage or at their house. So, okay, the, now we know that Aptera will deal with most of the major barriers to EV adoption, which is cost, range, charging infrastructure, and then for people that live in apartments. Um, so if, you, if those were things that um, were kind of hang-ups for you in adopting an EV, Aptera may be the vehicle for you. Um, if you have any comments or questions, please comment below. I always try to respond to comments if possible. And thanks for watching.